Throne and Liberty, as promised, the 100 hour review. Yes, I have officially put down 100 plus hours into this game, reached the end game, tried the end game dungeons, the PvP, all that good stuff. And the main question you guys have is Is this game worth playing? Is it fun? The short answer is yes. The long answer is let's find out. So where to start? Exploring the massive world, massive PvP battles, the bird malfunctioning, epic strategic dungeons, epic strategic dungeons with bird malfunctioning, or grinding mobs and dungeons for epics. Let's start at probably uh, the basics, which is uh, the questing, the leveling, and the world exploration. So at the start of this game, you enter Castleton. Okay, this will be your first village. In this village, you start learning about grinding, leveling, questing, crafting, all that basic stuff. So you start exploring this massive world, and it is a pretty massive world, which will probably become even massive later on, if that's the word. But you explore it, and you go, find, go through all these places uh, all these names that are very easily forgettable unfortunately there's a lot of places a lot of name places you know you have shattered temple and you zoom in and you start getting like red moon lake and then each of these teleports have different names. it gets confusing okay there's a lot of names but you start exploring you start leveling up in this world right and uh, the leveling is actually very enjoyable i think uh, leveling of this game reminds me of a classic style mmo is very grindy you can choose to do quests that which are the main quest, which will be the purple quest, or you can do side quests for EXP, or you can also farm or uh, grind mobs and open world dungeons, uh, which are these, uh, f just farming mobs for EXP. And then you have like other stuff you can do for EXP, like dungeons and solo dungeons and stuff. But that the main things are basically the quests, uh, the main quest, side quests, uh, and the mob farming. So you start grinding, very classical style, I really enjoy it, and you can potentially get to the max level, which is level 50 right now, you can get to the max level if you're a hardcore grinder, you can probably hit it on day 4, uh, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe a little bit later, I hit it on day 5, but I missed a day, so you can hit it fairly quickly, if you're more of a casual player, you can, it probably takes a little longer time, I still see people like searching for uh, dungeons for level 40 dungeons and stuff, so it could take probably up to 2 weeks if you're more of a casual player but the leveling in the quest is is grindy and the quests are really fun some of them are like the typical mmo quest where you just go around you you defeat monsters uh, you grind mobs you help uh, side quests do some missions on the left help an npc there help an npc on the, on the other side and there's some quests where you like explore the world as one where you uh, travel on top of this uh, floating whale some of the quests are very are based on like the weather so as you guys know the this game has a weather system right now you can see it is nighttime up top here and it's a strong wind and nighttime is a clear skies and some of the quests later on it will require you to uh, wait for it to rain which happens like sometimes or wait till nighttime or wait until dawn like there's a lot of stuff like the uh, i mean I'm going to be honest, the weather system is not as cool as I expected. It's more of a convenience thing. But uh, the weather does uh, play in a role when you start questing later on, which is a little bit fun, right? So the world is dynamic. It's kind of changing. And it's very beautiful. It looks great. So the, that is the questing experience. Now, the combat is something I really want to talk about. Because the combat in this game... Uh, you can move while attacking, which is nice. It is tap target. You have this action camera that you can use, which kind of gives you like this action, uh, the action combat feel. But at the end of the day, it's still like a top target game, right? So it's a top target game. And in my opinion, I enjoy this type of type target. I play classical MMOs. This is my style of uh, play. And what I really enjoy about the combat is the skill system, okay? So you have all these skills. And what I really love about it is you have your two weapons and you can change whatever skills you want. So if you want to, you can put on... Hey, if you love your great sword so much, you can basically put on the nine great sword skills, right? And then three dagger skills, or you can balance it out five five. You can six five, six four, whatever you. I mean, uh, six six six. You know, seven six uh, seven five. Whatever you want to do, so you can switch up uh, like you want to, uh, to suit your style of combat, your style of play. So people will end up having like different 
type of uh, skill builds uh, when it comes to the classes. So uh, the combat is really nice. And a lot of people complain about, yo, there is no dodge in this game. I wish there was a dodge. Instead of a dodge in this game, you have something called your Q, which is a parry skill. So your character does a parry. And the parry skill is very important because almost every single mob in this game and boss have parry mechanics. So instead of dodging to get away in this game, you have to actually parry. And some boss mechanics uh, will uh, end up one-shotting you if you're not parrying correctly. So it's probably basically your dodge, but you have a stamina bar like a dodge has. And uh, instead of dodging, you basically parry, right? So uh, that is like the overall combat. Now things get a little difficult because now we need to talk about the upgrades like what can you upgrade in this game and at the end of the day it gets a little overwhelming because you have weapon up skill skill level uh, upgrades you have use skill uh level ups you have active skill which is actually your passive skills then you have gear enchantments uh, that you need to level up then you have traits that you need to level up so there's a lot it gets very overwhelming so let me explain it to you very easily very basic in this game you'll have two weapons that you can wield at all time now you can switch the weapons whenever you want however depending on how much you use the weapon so right now i use great sword and dagger the most and i also have used sword and shield i haven't played the other classes and you guys can see that when i use these weapons these are just like the weapon level skill and when you click on it you can see that you kind of want to invest in your weapon because you start getting like a lot of like big bonuses uh, later on so you can switch your weapon whenever you want but the best thing is to actually just grind with a weapon. And the way you get weapon mastery, this is called weapon mastery, is by killing mobs. So the best way to do that is probably entering like the open world dungeons right here. And just grinding the weapon that you want to play. Later on, you can obviously again switch whenever, but it does put you in a restriction because of the weapon mastery. So that's the first thing. And then you have something called your use skill and your active skill. Active skill are basically passive skills, but the use skills in this game... You level up by getting these books. Now, you can get these books by doing events, through dungeons, through crafting, through contracts. So, a lot of ways to get these books. And these books will level up your skills. So, basically, if I have this skill that stuns, it can increase the stun, stun duration. While I have some skill that does damage, it can increase the damage of the skill, right? So, it basically like boosts the skill to increase uh, what the skill does. So, overall, very useful. And f the best thing to do, in my opinion, is focus on your main weapon and kind of use a secondary weapon as like an offhand. And then eventually you can start leveling it up uh, later on. But right now, you guys can see that my main investments, I have like epic investments into my greatsword, but really bad investments into my dagger right now. Uh, obviously, I should like level up the dagger a little bit more, but the skills of the dagger. But right now, I use mainly greatsword skills, so it's not that important to me. Uh, you just use the bonuses and then you have uh, the gear enchanting now the how the gear enchanting works is first of all you need to like upgrade your gear so you start with green gear you get the blue gear you get epic gear once you reach epic gear you want to start increasing the level of the gear this is not like lost arc where it's like a percentage of fail you will always be able to feed and and get closer to the 100 percent, right however sometimes you get lucky and you get like you hit like a big percentage and sometimes you just hit the small percentage right but you get this by just grinding daily doing dungeons doing uh quests and that's how you upgrade your gear now when you have the full epic gear you drop epic gear by just uh, grinding crafting grinding mobs super classic style mmo you grind mobs for hours you grind dungeons to get the epic gear you can awfully buy it to the marketplace but we'll get into that later on but that's how you get level up in this uh, your gear so you get the epic gear and then you start leveling it up and if you look at your web uh, gear you can see down there it says nine so it can be upgraded nine times so like this weapon right here the great sword I that i have you can't see it here because i have it in my bag it's level 9 which is the max level of the gear and then when i get an epic gear i can feed it we we'll end up at like a plus three maybe a plus four epic and then you can level up the epic to plus nine but eventually when you get better gear you might be able to level up to plus 12 plus 15 and it will show it on the gear right there uh what's the max level of it and then when you get to the end game end game you want to start working on your traits so each gear piece has three traits that you can get and uh you want to get like the best traits for your uh, uh, class and that's how you will min max your gear so that is basically like the whole like leveling and gearing system in the game and that's what you want to be focusing on is those things your skills and your gear enchanting 
now next up let's talk about the pvp so in this game the pvp is focused around zerg pvp the only way to like defeat people in this game is through zerg very hard to defeat them 1v1 even in a smaller groups like two uh two man groups very hard you want to like everything is kind of focused on zerg pvp and a lot of classes don't have a lot of aoe skills so that you don't like, just get destroyed in mass mass pvp right some classes have a few pvp uh, aoe skills my uh my great star has a few uh aoe skills but overall you don't have much aoe skills everything is a revolve around zerg pvp and mass pvps if you open up your map you can see here there's many things that uh uh include a lot of like pvp gameplay so you will have for example at certain places like these flags right here there'll be like def defense and attack so basically during certain events guilds can go and alliances can go and fight for the point and then if you win the point you get sometimes you get a damage bonus like this like your yeah, uh, occupying effect is direct hit so you increase the hit level it reproduces uh materials for you every hour which you can use for crafting which is great so owning these are very important and winning these is good some of these points if you uh win certain points they can spawn field bosses guild bosses every 24 hours if you own that point and then you can farm those for epic gear so owning these points are really good right now the bad thing about this is eventually it gets dominated by alliances we'll jump into like the guild system later on but that's basically what the pvp is all about it's about owning these spots fighting for like massive zerg pvp and eventually there will be like castles and stuff that you can get which will give another cool bonuses so it's a lot of stuff zerg pvp base and uh, eventually they'll all open events so on this event tab you guys can see uh conflict places basically means pvp so there'll be my events where you have to kill mobs but at the same time there'll be pvp involved and so there's a lot of like zerg pvp mass pvp happening uh everywhere there's not much of like arena types pvp yet it, everything is like based on zerg and massive fights so that is like the pvp uh, uh conflict thing so they want to add like guild politics and stuff to it i'm going to jump into it and get to the guild system but uh the nice thing about it is if you are a free roamer uh a solo player you can kind of participate in pvp because the only way for you to die is to get zerg right unless like uh, if you're if there's a one player on you you can very easily like, disengage from the player uh so as a solo player if you go in and you try to do some events you have the ability to do so you know uh, unless you get like zerg by a massive guild now the pve so the pve has a lot of things so we have something called the solo dungeons or the solo player you can uh, challenge these floors and they get progressively harder and harder and the better rewards and but eventually they come to an end they might add more later but th this was fun to do when you're leveling up and grinding finishing all the floors were re really fun and then you have paula's dimension circle which are dungeons so when you hit level 50 you open death's abyss these dungeons and these are actually mechanical challenging however what i did not enjoy in the dungeons are the mobs and the ads are super tanky what i do like about the ads is that they have one shot mechanics if you don't stun an ad they will wipe out your party and they get difficult but they are way too tanky so the mobs take like half an hour uh just to get into the boss which i did not enjoy that much but the boss mechanics are fun they're challenging it's a hard content you need to farm them however the drop rate is pretty bad i farm like 15 plus dungeons I haven't seen a single epic yet so the dungeons are a six player dungeons of course you need a holy tree you need a tank you need a healer your dps and they're fun and challenging you had a great time doing uh the dungeons and then you have guild uh before you get to guild dungeons uh then you have open world dungeons which are basically these places that these uh small dungeons here that you can enter there's three around the map eventually they'll open more and uh, when you hit milestones but here you go in you can fight elite monsters it's open world so everybody can come here and during nighttime that place turns into pvp uh so you gotta be gotta be careful but these monsters they can drop good loot for you and this is where you farm your weapon exp so it's like an open world dungeons where you go in and you fight these and you get some loot for yourself you know upgrade materials all that good juice so a lot of people are farming these this is a good way to farm like your solent which is your gold 
uh, this string right here uh, and farming weapon exp so that's like the open world dungeon you do uh, when you're done uh, with your stuff then you have your contracts which are these things this these contracts give you basically 15 a day it reaches 15 a day so this is your daily and your daily have a chance to drop uh, a circle i mean a lucky charm and i've i done over 20 plus lucky charm and they have a chance to give you an epic and i never i've seen one epic so far and you get 15 a day 50 contracts a day you have like a chance to get the lucky coin uh so like you can get up to one to two lucky coins a day and then there's a chance to get an epic so the game is very grindy it makes you farm a lot of mobs and these quests are like right now i picked out the easy quest because i just have to activate things but some of the main quest the control quests are kill ads kill mobs and grind them right so grinding is a big part of the game uh, i enjoy it a lot of people might not enjoy it but going around like uh, farming uh farming mobs right here has a chance to drop you epics too so I've seen an epic recipe before, but it takes a lot of grinding, a lot of farming, but the game is basically made around a lot of grinding, a lot of farming. So you want to be grinding these mobs. Uh, very classic style MMO. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, and then do you have guild bosses if you go to your guild territory which is in vienta village you can enter it and every i think you have four weekly tries to do guild raids the guild raids are basically like world bosses field bosses but for your guild and then you can uh, through your guild you can farm these and you can grind these and get epic rewards because it because uh, let's jump into like the last thing for the pve which are the massive field bosses right the spawns field bosses around the world it, it pop up an event here and eventually show you uh that it's going to spawn a war boss but however these field bosses are usually controlled by the massive guilds it's very hard to get loot if you're not a part of the massive guilds so if you're part of one of the big guilds you can actually get loot uh let me see here we have a timetable right here you see here uh some of them are pvp mode some are peace uh, even the peace ones is you need enough contribution you need enough contribution to actually get any loot so it's very difficult to get any loot at all but that's why you have guild bosses so you can actually have a chance to get epic loot by fighting these bosses right because these are the field bosses so that is the pve content in the game now let's talk about guilds because guilds are very important in this game guilds control everything in this game there's no like factions i mean they kind of turn into factions but they're based around guilds so if you come here to the vienta village and you go in here this is your guild base right this is where you have guild npcs this is where you do the guild raids and there's a lot of like guild politics happening in the game too that we're going to talk about but in this place right here you can see there's a portal right here where you meet up with your guild and you fight these monsters right and then you have the npcs but if you look at the guild menu there's a lot of things you can do within a guild right the typical donation stuff now in the guild you have guild contracts which you farm and grind to get rewards for the guild uh, if you look here i've gotten the rewards like i can claim all these rewards which gives me uh, materials it gives me good stuff that i can that i will need so you want to be joining a, a guild and then you have something called distribution now when you do guild raids uh, if you drop items you can give these items to players or put in the guild auction and so each guild will run like a different kind of auction different kind of distribution system in their guild so people have a chance to get loot you probably want to join a guild which distribution system works the best for you uh some people might give them to the best players some people might do it like rng role-based system but it's very different from each guild and not only that there's a lot of like benefits in the guild when you're leveling up the guild you unlock raids over time guild raids so the more you level up the guild the better raids you unlock and you also start unlocking buffs and then you unlock guild skills so there's a lot of stuff that you unlock within the guild that can boost you right so guild skills right here and then the guild can use uh the currency that they have earned to basically use these guild seeds so they can be like guild blessing exp for two hours mana region a bit guild rating abyss so you get uh, a lot of like basically boost by being in the guild now the politics because if you guys see a page here there's one page in this thing that's called allied hostile and watched so here 
this is where the guild politics come in because like i was mentioning earlier is in this game being in a guild is super important because the guilds control maps they get resources they get buffs they control raid bosses so right now it's a perfect example of how it might end up in most servers because right now we have a guild alliance that controls everything so this this what guild this guild right here what we they control almost everything in the map this one challenger guild which is a cz mon but mainly the winter guild all them they're allied together so what you can do is when you have allies you can put them here and then you can fight together to control these points then the hostile players have to come and challenge you uh to fight you so there'll be a lot of alliances a lot of guild politics involved uh to uh be able to get these places to get these resources to get fight these massive battles and have a chance to get good loot because at the end of the day if you want the best loot you want to compete for the best things you have to be joining a massive big guild so it's super important uh in the game uh to be in the guild now that is like i think i covered like most of the stuff here uh, in the game uh except the monetization now i could talk a little bit about the monetization but i'm doing like a full video because the monetization system is massive in this game okay the, uh overall like if you look at the monetization system the marketplace and stuff you can buy gear and everything so i have a planned video on friday on like covering all the monetization all the pay to win but the, at the end the short answer for the pay to win is yes the game is paid to win but to what degree that you can find out in my next video now overall opinions on throne and liberty i have to say i enjoyed putting 100 hours in the game when the game launches i will be playing it for sure i enjoy the combat uh i enjoy the world the world looks amazing i love the, like the classical feel to it like super grindy you guys know me if you know family mode i love to grind i can grind i, I mean unlucky I've grinded a bunch of dungeons, a bunch of stuff, gotten good loot, but I don't mind. You know, when you get that loot, you feel it feels good, you know, to be able to grind and grind. So super grindy. I do enjoy the PvP, but I do see the PvP uh, becoming very one-sided eventually. If like all the top guilds uh, join the alliance, it might not uh, be good for the health of the server I, I noticed that when i played new world where it's all about like territory wars and eventually when uh, the massive guilds took over uh, a lot of people ended up quitting so it's a big fear of that but overall i think uh, the game definitely has some things to work on like the monetization system we will talk about uh later on and the weather system i wish there was more to the weather system because right now uh some classes get benefit of the weather system like an assassin has like one pass there without doing nighttime it does like more duration or more damage and then you have the mage that if you're raining and you get wet you can do like more damage There's, like, certain skills on certain classes that uh, get benefit from it but i wish like all classes got some kind of benefit and the weather system was a little bit more uh, uh played a more of a role in the daily world because right now it's just like a convenience thing right like i like it but i feel like the potential of it is very limited right now the dungeons have been fun they're strategically they're fun i spent like hours if you guys watch my stream i spent like four or five hours in one of the dungeons i mean i did pug i didn't run with like a grouped uh team or my usual team so that's why it probably took so long but the dungeons are fun they're challenging but they do need a little bit of work when it comes to the mobs and stuff but that is it my 100 hour throne and liberty review let me know what do you guys think do you guys like what you see i guess excited for throne and liberty will you guys be checking it out my predicted release date of this game is quarter one of 2024 but with, there's no official launch yet but thank you guys so much for watching take it easy check out this video right here and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye